Hey guys, so I meant to try and record a bunch of Oscar nominated films before the actual Oscars, but my Oscar prediction videos took up a ridiculous amount of time. So yeah, I'm only just getting around to it now. But yeah, I've got reviews coming up for Lady Bird, Best Picture winner, The Shape of Water, but I'm gonna kick things off today with I, Tonya. So, I, Tonya is the comedy slash drama biopic about the infamous figure skater Tonya Harding, who was banned from competitive figure skating after she may or may not have been involved in an attack on fellow competitor Nancy Kerrigan. This all happened in the early 90s, so I was too young to remember this being covered in the media, but when I was watching I, Tonya, I was fascinated by this completely insane story, and it makes for a very good film. My only prior knowledge of Tonya Harding was that she was one of the celebs on board this rocket ship to the sun with Homer and Bart in a Halloween episode of The Simpsons? I finally understand why now. I love that when you rewatch something that you loved as a kid and then you finally get the joke as an adult. <laughs> Go me. It made me think if The Simpsons did that now in today's culture, who would be on board that rocket ship? It would probably be all the Kardashians, Snooki, Donald Trump, Dan Pena, Katie Hopkins, those YouTubers, Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Ugh. I'm just saying, if The Simpsons want to rehash an old joke, I'm sure the world would appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, let's meander back to the review of I, Tonya. It's directed by Craig Gillespie, and the only work I've seen of his previously was The Finest Hours. And the screenplay was written by Stephen Rogers, who previously wrote P.S. I Love You. I, Tonya is set in the late 80s and early 90s, and it details the rise and fall of former Olympic figure skater Tonya Harding, who is played by Margot Robbie. It's set almost like a satirical documentary with recorded footage of all those involved in Tonya's story, including her abusive mother, Lavonna, who's played by Alison Janney, her former husband, Jeff, who's played by Sebastian Stan, her figure skating coach, Diane, who's played by Julianne Nicholson, as well as a bunch of others and Tonya herself. And interspersed throughout the narrative are these flashbacks, which are told from the point of view of the person telling the story. So each person has their own recount of how all these events transpired. Stephen Rogers has done a very good job of sympathizing Tonya Harding. He crafts a story from so many different vantage points with this mockumentary styled approach that it leaves us as the viewers free to make up our own minds as to who's to blame for the Nancy Kerrigan incident. The incident which Nancy's knee was broken is still one that isn't fully certain because all the characters that we watch in the story all believe that they are telling the truth and that someone else is to blame. But the truth is open to debate here because you can make a claim that Tonya Harding did have plausible deniability and she wasn't at fault. But she became demonized, a laughingstock, the butt of everyone's jokes, a verb for ugliness or sabotage. She became infamous and her life will always be connected to this event, even if she was at fault or not. And I felt that scrutiny and hardship in Margot Robbie's performance. There's a scene towards the end where Tonya is applying a makeup before she she's about to compete, and it's quite heart-wrenching because she has to be this image of this wholesome American athlete, something she was never to begin with in the first place, but at that same time, everybody around the world is throwing hate at her because she is connected to this scandal. Robbie manages to convey so much conflicting struggle through her eyes, it's just an amazing performance. Definitely her best so far, and yeah, totally worthy of the Oscar nomination. And speaking of Oscars, Alison Janney took home the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in this film as Lavonna Harding. In real life, Alison Janney is very good friends with screenwriter Stephen Rogers, and you can tell that Rogers crafted this character specifically for Alison Janney, because he knows Janney has a lot of venom in her bite. It is a sensational character to play, a cold-hearted, crabby bitch of a mother who's also emotionally, psychologically, and physically abusive to her kids. It's got guaranteed Oscar nom written all over it. Yep, hello Monique and Precious. Jenny does deliver a captivating performance, but the way this character is written, it would be gold for any decent character actress to play. And anybody would have probably got an Oscar nomination for playing this role. And in my opinion, she can be a little cartoony in places. She's a turbulent, erratic, F-bombing pusher. One that you can see future drag queens drawing inspiration from. It's so pantomime that sometimes it can feel a little monotonous. It's still a worthy win for a wonderful actress, but I wouldn't say it's the most three-dimensional of all the characters that Alison Janney has played. She basically is just an abusive monster. And this whole topic of abuse leads me into one of my critiques of this film. It's a double-edged sword, this critique, because on the one hand, I was actually very impressed that Stephen Rogers' script did address the abuse that Tonya received from her mother and her husband. Because domestic abuse is something that does happen, but it's not something that's always talked about in society because it's seen as taboo or shameful. So kudos on them for not shying away from a difficult topic. However, the film's approach to this abuse might not be well received by everybody. Sometimes it's used for comedic effects, such as the scene with a shotgun, and at times it normalizes abuse, so it could send the wrong message to young girls that 
it's completely normal when a husband or boyfriend hits you, making the victim feel like they've done something to deserve it. And also, it doesn't do much to help the issue. It certainly raises the topic of conversation, but it doesn't offer any sort of approach to how to solve it. There's no talk of women's shelters or what to do when this happens. Even after Tonya divorced her husband because of the abuse, she still goes back to him, which might not be seen as the best message for girls watching this, but then again, I can't criticize that too much because that's what happened in the story. So yeah, if they're going for a faithful reenactment, I can't critique it too much for being faithful to that. So the problem is that it doesn't really do anything to help the discussion because by the time the film finishes, it hasn't done anything to address the issues. It's merely used as a plot device to help us sympathize with Tonya as a character. And also one of my other criticisms of this film is that it does feel a little bit shaky when it comes to its special effects. There are some times where it's quite convincing, and there are other times where it's a bit, mm. Like the sequences where we're watching Tonya do her routines on the ice rink, they're very sleek and they're very fluid. It almost feels like we're her ice skating partner watching her do all this stuff. But there were times where you could clearly tell that it wasn't Margot Robbie we were watching. It was either her face put onto someone else's body, or it was a double, or it was just some mishmash editing with a lot of green screen. There was no point where I was actually expecting Margot Robbie to actually learn how to do a triple axle jump to play the part of Tonya Harding. But there were times that I was very aware that I was watching green screen. So to summarize guys, I, Tonya is a pretty great film. It's well structured and the pacing never dips. It held my attention for the entire duration. I was impressed by all of the performances. There was a great blend of laughs and drama. Even though it's a little glossy in the more sketchy issues that it tries to address, it still is very entertaining. Let's ask the three big questions. Would I watch it again? Definitely. Would I recommend that you guys go see it? Absolutely. And what score do I give it? Well, I'm gonna give I, Tonya a score of 9 out of 10. And my fourth and final question for you today, guys, relates back to that episode of The Simpsons that I referred to. Which bunch of infamous celebs would you like to see on board a rocket ship to the sun? Whatever you think, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you do like these videos, guys, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, guys, for more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Gearfield, and I'll see you next time.